Now, this is the story of a true rock and roll survivor. She started singing folk songs in 1964 in coffee houses in London. And somehow, when she was 17 years old, she got invited to a Rolling Stones album launch party. She became friends with the Stones. She became part of the swinging London set. In fact, she lived with Mick Jagger for a number of years. She had hits and she had drugs and her life hit rock bottom and she reinvented herself. In fact, she says her life is an affirmation of her strength and her luck. And over the years, she's recorded 23 albums. So let's find out more about this musical rock and roll icon Marianne Faithful. Let's drop the needle. After being discovered by Andrew Logue Oldham, the Stones' manager, he told Mick Jagger and Keith Richards that they had to write a song for Marianne Faithful. So the three of them sat down and they wrote As Tears Go By. And it was a huge hit and made Marianne part of the British invasion. She appeared on numerous television shows in the UK and in the US. In 1965, she married John Dunbar, and her best man at the wedding was Peter Asher. You remember him, Peter of Peter and Gordon, and also the brother to Jane Asher, who was Paul McCartney's fiance for a time. Pretty cool, huh? But not long after they were married, she gave birth to a son. And then it gets even weirder, because then she leaves her husband to go live with Mick Jagger. She becomes friends with Anita Pallenberg, who was Keith Richards' friend at the time, and they set the style for swinging London in the mid-60s. They were part of the scene. Her relationship with Jagger continued for five years until 1970. And during this time, she was the inspiration for a number of Stone songs, including You Can't Always Get What You Want. And in fact, she co-wrote Sister Morphine. And around this time, she appeared in the ill-fated TV show or film or whatever it was going to be, The Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus, which wasn't released until many, many years later. But now you can see it on streaming services or you can get the DVD. In 1965, she releases two albums simultaneously, Marianne Faithful in the UK and US, and Come My Way only in the UK. Why two at the same time? Marianne still thought of herself as a folk singer, but on the success of As Tears Go By, the record company thought of her as a pop singer. So Marianne Faithful is the pop album, and Come My Way is her folk album. Marianne Faithful's tracks include Come Stay With Me, the Petula Clark hit, Downtown, the Herman's Herman's hit, Can't You Hear My Heartbeat, and the Beatles hit, I'm a Loser, and of course her own hit, As Tears Go By. Come My Way includes typical folk songs including Blowing in the Wind and House of the Rising Sun, in which Keith Richards plays guitar on both of them. Also included are Spanish is a Loving Tongue, Four Strong Winds, and Bells of Freedom. Interestingly, the cover photo was designed by Chris O'Dell. Now, you might remember Chris from previous episodes. She's Miss O'Dell. She's on the rooftop of the Beatles' final concert. She lives with Leon Russell, and she befriends and then lives with George and Patty Harrison in Friar Park. For her second album in the U.S., Go Away From My World, this includes some tracks from Come My Way, as well as Yesterday, Tom Paxton's The Last Thing on My Mind, and Scarborough Fair. Now, since her U.S. and U.K. releases are getting different, she releases an album which is only in the U.K. called North Country Maid. It contains Scarborough Fair, The Last Thing on My Mind, from the U.S. release, but also Donovan's Sunny Good Street and Wild Mountain Time. But most notoriously, and probably what most of you will remember Marianne Faithful for, aside from As Tears Go By, is when the Rolling Stones got busted for drugs, Marianne Faithful was naked, wrapped in a rug at the time. And of course, the press had a field day for this. And of course, this was very 
detrimental to her career. But she continues on. In 1967, she releases an album called Love in a Mist. It includes some songs that were already released, and then there's Tim Harden's Don't Make Promises and Reason to Believe, and Donovan's Young Girl Blues. This will be her last album until 1976, and the reason for this is that after leaving Jagger, her life went into free fall. She got heavily into drugs. She got addicted to heroin. She lost custody of her young son, and she was living in the streets. Fortunately, Marianne is rescued by her friends, and in 1976, she records a country music album called Dream in My Dream, which is then re-released in 1978 as an album called Faithless. Tracks include Waylon Jennings' This Time, Jesse Coulter's I'm Not Lisa, and then the not-so-country Chuck Berry's Sweet Little Sixteen. The album was not very successful. By 1979, her voice is permanently altered by drugs, health, and cigarettes. But she goes ahead and records an album called Broken English, and it gets great reviews with the critics saying they love her whiskey-soaked voice. This is her first album to chart in the U.S. since 1965. Tracks include Broken English, The Ballad of Lucy Jordan, and a remake of John Lennon's Working Class Hero. And she appeared on Saturday Night Live. But during her appearance, her voice cracks and then gives out. It's a very sad thing to watch. And in 1981, she releases the album Dangerous Acquaintances, which is considered a flop because it's nowhere near as good as the previous Broken English. Next, she releases an album called Strange Weather, and it's a rather strange album. She reinvents herself as a blues and jazz singer. It's kind of a dark album, and that's probably because it was recorded and inspired by her mentally ill lover who killed himself. Tracks include Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Strange Weather, Bob Dylan's I'll Keep It With Mine, and a remake of her hit As Tears Go By. But the album did not chart in the U.S. Marianne Faithful also appeared in many movies and theatrical presentations, and in 1990, she appears with Roger Waters for his production of The Wall in Berlin. Besides continuing to record, she's also written a couple of autobiographies, Faithful, an autobiography, and Marianne Faithful, A Life on Record. In 2011, she releases her 19th studio album, Horses in High Heels. It's well-received. Tracks include the great Carol King and Jerry Goffin song, Going Back, Alan Toussaint's Back in Baby's Arms, and of course the title track, Horse in High Heels. It takes her three years to record her next album, which is Give My Love to London. There's mixed reviews on this one, but check out the title song, The Everly Brothers' The Price of Love, and Roger Waters' Sparrows Will Sing. Her next album is called Negative Capability, released in 2018, and she describes it as her most honest album. The album is very well received. She records again as tears go by, now sounding like she has lived it. Witches songs and Bob Dylan's It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. Sadly, in 2020, Marianne Faithful contracted COVID and spent a number of weeks in the hospital. She's 75 years old. So it takes a while to rebound from this illness. She is still in rehab, which includes singing practice. And we certainly all wish her a very fast and full recovery. Here's a woman who's lived the ups and the downs of a rock and roll life. And as you listen to her re-recording of As Tears Go By, you know she's seen and done it all. <laughs> and she's kept a rockin'. Now, one more thing. This concludes episode 99 of Bernie Drops the Needle. That means our next episode is episode 100. I've been working on it for quite some time. I think it's going to be very cool, and I hope you like it. Until then, keep it rocking. If you like this episode, hit the like button, and you can also leave me a comment down below, and I'll respond to you. If you subscribe, we'll let you know when future episodes come out.